the, you know the end. And if I say, oops, I, don't worry, I love you, you love me, born to be, you got to fight for your right to, so embarrassing, <laughs> you ain't nothing but a, ain't no mountain, I believe I can, you say I'm a dreamer but, we will, we will, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, find out, how about some difficult ones, under my umbrella, I've never heard this, but they told me you would not know it. Been okay, now for the gangsters. Been spending most of their lives living in a... My brothers are like... Uh -huh. <laughs> How about this one then? All right, all right, all right, all right. Do you know the rest of it? It's outcast. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, complete the verses. وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى Excellent. وَنُصْلِهِ جَهَنَّمُ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا طيب وقال الرسول يا رب إن قوم اتخذوا هذا القرآن مهجورة Oh my Lord The Prophet said Oh my Lord Truly my people have abandoned the Quran وما من غائبة في السماء والأرض إلا في كتاب مبين. So what makes us think we will be able to say لا إله إلا الله so easily? When music rolls off our tongue and lyrics rolls off our tongue so easily, and the Quran has to struggle to come out of our mouth. There is a doctor, and he is a righteous man, inshaAllah, We don't overpraise him. He said in his career in a Muslim land, thirty-six people died in front of him. 36 people and he would tell them say la ilaha illallah and in his entire career only one person was able to say la ilaha illallah and he would say that now I guarantee you can say it a million times if you want to right now and everyone thinks they'll be able to say it but out of 36 he only saw one person able to say la ilaha illallah so test yourself what rolls off of your tongue easily when you have a close call or you drop something and it breaks what is the first thing on your tongue? Do you say Bismillah, Subhanallah, La ilaha illallah, Astaghfirullah, or is it a bad word? Oh, sugar, or something else. Or do you start damning things because something happened or something broke? So if in this dunya, while you are 100% awake and conscious, the first thing that rolls out of your tongue is something bad or a bad word. What makes you think you can say La ilaha illallah and it will roll off your tongue easily? And the Prophet ﷺ said, "Man kana akhir kalamuhu fi dunya la ilaha illallah dakhal al jannah." Whoever his last speech is in this dunya is la ilaha illallah, he will enter into paradise. And so now, the whole point is not to make you think you will not be of those people. Ask Allah Azza wa Jalla that all of us are those who say la ilaha illallah is our final word. But the point is to make us afraid of our bad deeds. There was a man; his name was Zadan al Kindi, and he was a singer. And he sat with a like kind of a, a guitar type instrument with his friends on the road. And he was singing and they were clapping and enjoying. So Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he came and he passed by them. And so they left. And he grabbed this man, Zadan al-Kindi. He grabbed him and he shook him. And he said, Ya Ghulam, ma ahsana hadha sawt law kana biqra'at al-Qur'an. He said, oh young man, what an excellent voice this would be if only you were reciting the Qur'an. Or in another narration he tells him, لَوْ كَانَ مَا يُسْمَعُ مِنْ حُسْنِ صَوْتِكَ يَا غُلَامِ بِقِرَاءَةِ الْقُرْآنِ كُنْتَ أَنْتَ أَنْتَ He said, if, if what was heard from your voice was the recitation of the Qur'an, كُنْتَ أَنْتَ أَنْتَ Meaning you would have been the one people would turn to, people would look to for leadership. And so, Zadan then, he asked the people, who was that? They told him that was Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. He said that was Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the companion of the Prophet ﷺ. They said yes. So he ran to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and he began to cry to him and he broke his instrument. And Ibn Mas'ud embraced him and he cried and he said, كَيْفَ لَا أُحِبُّ مَنْ أَحَبَّهُ اللَّهِ He said, how can I not love the one whom Allah loves? Why does Allah love him? Because إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ التَّوَّابِينَ وَيُحِبُّ الْمُتَطَهِرِينَ Allah loves those 
who constantly repent and those who purify themselves. So the man repented and that's why Ibn Mas'ud cried and hugged him and Zadan stayed with him until he became one of the Imams in the Qur'an. Perhaps some people who listened to this were angered by some of my speech because it showed fault in something that they loved. But remember that we're only calling you to something that is more beloved to you. We're calling you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the speech of Allah and to the Qur'an. And no one is offended when he is called to something that is greater. So if you're, going to, you're about to eat a meal and someone invites you to a meal that you love more, you do not become offended. And so that's what we're doing. We're calling people and we're sure that they love Allah more and that they love the Qur'an more. We want people to take the position of Imam Malik when he was a young boy. And he wanted to become a singer and his mother moved him towards knowledge and now he's one of the Imams of the Ummah. Today, Islam really and truly needs you to defend it against atheism, to bring people to Allah, to teach the youth and to teach the kids their religion and the proper role models to have, and to defend it against ideological attacks and political attacks. Your Prophet ﷺ is being insulted every month and every year. Will you plug up your ears with your iPod as if nothing happened? So take this then, those who listen to music, take it as your first step. And go home and delete your music files and break your CDs and come back to Allah or turn to Him even more. I want to conclude by sharing something very personal with you. When I used to listen to music and I used to attempt to learn to play uh, guitar, and then I heard that music was haram but I didn't want to believe it. But I knew that was the truth. Because every time I listened to music, the feeling wasn't the one I was getting now at the classes and the masajid and reciting the Qur'an. So I became more and more convinced that it was haram without reading a single book or article on the topic. And I thought, there is no way I can stop listening to music. But what happened was that once I was very busy for two or three days, and I didn't have any time to listen to music. After the two or three days were over, I realized that I didn't even have the longing for it. And you don't really need to listen to it. There is no addiction, there is no patch or gum involved in quitting music. I just stopped listening to it and, and there was no shaking or anything of that sort. So it's not that difficult to stop yourself. And one of my family members, I have two brothers and two sisters and I'm not, they don't want me to disclose which one. But one of my family members was still continuing to listen to music. And so he or she said that one day they saw a, ru'ya, a, a, a dream in which the Prophet ﷺ visited us in our house. And the person, this family member said, I was very excited when I came to know that the Prophet ﷺ is in the rooms in one of our house. And he was talking to you, meaning me, and my mother, we were with the Prophet ﷺ and talking to him. And I'm, you know, we're from Sudan, so in Sudan when a guest comes, you, you bring a tray, you put, pour some Pepsi and you bring it to the guest. So she said, I want to get Pepsi for the Prophet ﷺ. <laughs> and when I, he went to take, so now I'll throw you off. When he went to take the, uh, the drink, the person stopped by the bathroom. And in the bathroom, he felt that there was something there. The person felt that there was something in the bathroom. He found a, a baby boy sitting in the bathtub. And he was very cute. And he was singing a song uh, in Arabic. أَبْعِدْ مِنِّي الْوَلَدْ دَهْ هَيْجَنِّنِّي الْوَلَدْ دَهْ Take this little boy away from me. This little boy is going to drive me crazy. The person says, I looked at him and I, then I remembered that I have to take the Pepsi. But I was delayed in the, looking at this boy. And I, when I got to the room, the Prophet ﷺ was gone. But there was a very strong, beautiful odor in the room. The person says, I woke up very happy. And days later, I kept thinking about it. And I started to think about the lyrics of the song. And I realized that the child was adorable. And it was alluring, and it was singing, and it made me miss the visit of the Prophet ﷺ. So it diverted me from the Prophet ﷺ. I was diverted from the Prophet ﷺ because of singing, to the point that I didn't even see him, and didn't show him the hospitality of offering the drink to the guest, and all was left was the scent of the Prophet ﷺ. I will conclude with the verse from the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاللَّهُ يُرِيدُ أَن يَتُوبَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَيُرِيدُ الَّذِينَ يَتَّبِعُونَ الشَّهَوَاتِ أَن تَمِيلُوا مَيْلًا عَظِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wish for you to turn 
he, he wished for you to turn to him and he wished that he would forgive you but those who follow their lusts and desires want you to turn away from Allah a great deal with that I ask Allah Azza wa Jal and he is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim to reward those who put this event together and who will help distribute this lecture and I would like to thank you also for being um, you know, patient we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept the sincere repentance of all the believers who hear this talk and decide to leave the haram. Ya Allah, we ask you to give them strength and bring them closer to you and make them from those whom you love. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us a good end on this earth and that He makes the last thing we say in this dunya, La ilaha illallah, and to make the best day the day when we meet Him while He is pleased with us and He enters us in, into Jannah while He is pleased with us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us the truth as clear truth and make us follow it and show us the falsehood as clear falsehood and help us abstain from it. I would like to thank you for being an attentive audience and I apologize for, uh, for going so much over. Thank you for being patient. And I ask Allah to make us of those who hear this speech and follow the best of it and the best of what was said. My apologies if I used any phrases that were hurtful or inappropriate. Wassalamu wa baraka ala Muhammad wa ala ali sahbihi ajma'een. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين ما بعد. We now want to look at the arguments of those who say that music is halal. And bear in mind that we mentioned how the Sahaba didn't differ on this issue, and that there was consensus amongst the Sahaba and earlier the earliest generations of scholars from the Tabi'een that it is haram that it's not permissible. But there are scholars who argue that it's halal and mostly contemporary scholars that argue that it's halal and they base this ruling on mistakes of early scholars as we're going to look at inshallah. And the fact that a mistaken minority saw that it was halal it doesn't make it a legitimate opinion, you see? Okay, so if you have three or four people they have an opinion that it's halal that doesn't mean this is a legitimate opinion. Because for any opinion to be valid or legitimate, it has to be backed up by some evidence, right? So you can't have just someone jump and just say some random words unless there's you know, some evidence that backs it up, then you can say, okay, this is a legitimate argument. So I'm going to give you some examples of opinions, of some real examples of opinions of scholars on different issues. And these are all, uh, Ill, no, they're not really legitimate, they don't have uh, no good uh, any evidence, clear evidence. There are some scholars that say it's not permissible for you to see your mother's hair. So she has to be wearing hijab in front of you. Others have said dog meat is halal. Others have said stealing from the kuffar uh, is halal. Please nobody make takbir, okay? <laughs> there are some scholars said that you know, Isha prayer in, in the summer in the most northern European cities uh, countries like you know in, in England and maybe Finland and so on in summer they shouldn't pray Isha they, they have this opinion they based it on the fact that they, they can't see any of, this, any of the signs that it's time for Isha and therefore they said it should be dropped during the summer but in the winter you can pray Isha so these are all opinions but they're invalid opinions because they don't have the, the proof or the backing so uh, the fact that someone has an opinion doesn't make it valid unless they have strong support or strong proof. So let's look at some of the, uh, the arguments presented by those who say that music is halal. And they tried to produce some logical arguments. They said that, uh, they tried to mention some of the good things that come out of music. They say it's a useful tool and an instrument of change. I mean, and you can feel free to disagree with me, I personally don't believe that uh, this is generally true. And I'll explain what I mean by generally true. Because you might have some famous singer who will sing a song about and bring awareness to 